Why is it that some players are able to dominate the court with their forehand, making it look so easy, while when other players try this, they get their feet tangled and never in the right position and always make unforced errors? Now, I used to be like the second group of people, but over the last few years, I managed to fix the mistakes I was making, and now I feel way more comfortable running around my backhand and controlling points with my forehand. Not only has this worked on myself, but it's worked on the juniors that I've been coaching as well. So in this video, I'm going to show you two big mistakes players make when hitting their inside out forehand, and I'm going to show you some exercises that you can use to fix them so that you can dominate more points with your forehand and win more matches as a result. But wait, you may be thinking, why do I even need to hit inside out forehand? My backhand's way better and I can just win points with that instead. And this is where this man comes into the equation. There was a time when I got obsessed with tennis statistics and I stumbled across Craig from Brain Game Tennis and his whole philosophy is about using statistics to interpret the game rather than just using opinions. He debunked a number of tennis myths, one of them being that lots of people had this image of Nadal that he wins by making hundreds of balls and that he's essentially this optimum version of the Spanish pusher. But instead, he's actually one of the most offensive players in the game with his forehand and his serve, and he's the king of winning points in that zero to four rally range. He also showed how everyone goes on about how Djokovic is the best backhand ever, but he actually wins way more points with his forehand when he's dominating with it within zone C. And just think about it, if you're facing an opponent and they move around a backhand and set up with the forehand, you're going to be a lot more intimidated than if they just set up with their backhand. And now you know how effective it is to hit that inside out forehand effectively. Let's get on to the first mistake. If I ask you to draw the fastest way to get from point A to point B, you'd think that's easy. You just move in a straight line like this. Now, if we put these points on the tennis court, is it still the fastest way? Well, yeah, but it's not the best way. That's because you're going to end up being so close to the ball and make a ton of unforced errors. Out of the people I coach, this is the most common mistake. So how do we move more effectively? We need to change our movement path to a semicircle so that we create space between ourselves and the ball. Because remember, the ball is going to be moving towards your body due to the direction that the ball is coming towards you. So you need to create extra room with that semicircular movement. This way you can get a good contact point and reduce the likelihood of making an unforced error. And now you may be thinking, great, I know how to get to the ball better. What am I supposed to do with my feet once I get there? One coach is telling me I should always be on the front foot. The other is saying open stance, but then I see Federer and he's doing some sort of hop. What am I supposed to do? And I'm going to give you the answer that no one likes. It depends. It depends on the type of ball you receive and how early you get in position. I'm going to show you three different footwork patterns that you can use and the different types of situations in which they're useful. The first one is a neutral pivot. And I like to use this one when the ball is slightly lower and shorter and I can really step into it. The second one is the turning semi-open jump. I like to use this one when the ball is slightly higher and slower and I have time to set up and really explode into the shot. It's important to remember not to jump too high and you want to keep your body pretty close to the ground and transfer that weight forward. The third is the Federer style inside out hop. I tend to use this one when the ball is slightly wider and I'm a bit late to get around it. I don't really have time to do that semi-circular movement. You can start by practicing these without the ball to get a feel for the movements and then get someone to hand feed you different types of balls so that you can experiment which footwork pattern feels best in different situations. Then, once the options start to become second nature and you're making the court more consistently, you can place some yellow lines down to separate zone D and zone C. And all you'll want to do is rally cross court with your partner and make the rule that if the ball lands in zone C, you must hit a forehand and then you can practice the movements in more of a live situation. And remember, the line is just a rough guideline and it all depends on the ball that you're given. You might get some super slow balls in zone D that you can run around and hit a forehand on, or you might get some deep fast balls in zone C where you'll need to hit a backhand. So just experiment and you'll get a feel for it after a few rallies. Then what you'll want to do is play some open points where if the ball bounces, you have to hit a forehand, but if you come to the net, you can volley like normal, and your partner can only play between the yellow lines and the inside trap line. This will force you to be more proactive with that inside out forehand and help you practice dominating the court with the forehand. So after doing all of this, will you never miss an inside out forehand again? Well, no, obviously not. That's an exaggeration, but you will notice the difference and feel a bit more confident with it. And if you want to make sure that you're able to execute your new inside out forehand with the same level as it is in training into a match situation, then you're going to want to check out this video right here. 